Welcome to the Man Tee Up podcast. I'm Kimmy B. And Lenny. That's right. We're here in the Man Cave, uh, episode 32. Now, before we go any further, remember, like, subscribe, share, follow. We are absolutely any and everywhere, and we absolutely love it when you comment on the clips that we post on social media. In fact, it's a great point of reference and usually gives Lenny and I content on weeks when we don't have an incredible guest in the studio. Uh, like today, you're stuck with... Just the, the two of us. <laughs> we can make it if... Okay, I won't sing. Sorry. Um, now, unfortunately, Lenny did not do his homework this week, but it's all good uh, because, Len, I've seen quite a few headlines um, over the past week or so that I think kind of pivot off of the conversation that we had, uh, especially with Grant Cardone. You know, we talk a lot about where the country's at financially, um, the American workforce, what's changed, what needs to change, what it's like being you know, an entrepreneur, being a business owner, being a leader, what it's like being a worker bee. Um, you know, and not that there's been some disturbing um, developments, but things are getting a little, a little crazy. Um, we had another major retailer announce that they're shutting 150 stores and laying off 20% of their workforce. That was Bed Bath & Beyond. Uh, and then we got the update that the CEO or the CFO actually off himself jumped out of a window um you know which made me feel very reminiscent of like the 80s market crash i wasn't yeah, old enough to be aware of it but i know when we savings seen, and loan crash but i feel like that was the thing that was happening it was either people jumping in front of subway trains people going out of windows in very high skyscrapers uh, a lot of people in the you know the money markets and things like that mostly um, guys mostly guys i mean but finance is a very male-dominated industry. Why is that? As well. Um, Do women not like it? No, because you have, I mean, I think it's, it's also a, a very big old boys network. Very big. Getting into those brokerage firms, getting into those big hedge funds can be difficult. Um, I think it's a very, very masculine uh, environment and energy, and you have to have that. I think there's a lot of alpha yeah. females out there that can hold their own. I mean, there's women on the stock market floor on the exchange. Mm -hmm. uh, there's definitely incredible brokers. There's incredible money managers that are female, but it takes a special type of. You I know. think females would be good at it because they're analytical, mm -hmm. predominantly, which is mainly what finance market is. But would it, would you okay? But with finance though, it, and this is something, and I could be completely wrong. I feel like. A lot of it is also still kind of, I don't want to say gut instinct, but it, I feel like finance is intuition too. Like you can, like commodities, like you can do your research. It's called you can insider be, trading. <laughs> is that what it's called? Okay, <laughs> never mind. Um, no, I, but I feel like there's- from inside. <laughs> yeah, okay. You're not helping the conversation. No, but I think that there's also a level of risk involved, um, you know, when you're doing something because you know what is it usually the bigger the risk the bigger the reward but it can also be <laughs> yeah i mean it, you know it's risk versus reward it's it's what it boils down to in life in general mm -hmm. you know but do you feel that way i mean you're a little bit older than i'm not much i don't know how aware you were of the markets in the 80s when they were crashing down around you uh, or down around us but does it feel like that right now does the does where we're at economically does where we're at as a country does it feel like it's you know if you look back throughout history the country goes up it goes down it goes up it goes mm -hmm. down it's yeah it it's Sexual. just the way it works it's you know a great depression okay well how do we get out of the great depression well we started we started building infrastructure in the united states to bring all the jobs back it it's continuous the cycle is continuous and you have you know major corporations go under all the time poor management you know different things i mean to be in retail right now mm -hmm. is difficult i'm sure because people don't want to leave their house they're scared they're lazy they're whatever the case may be People are like, fuck it, I can sit on my couch and the shit gets delivered. What do I have to do anything for? Why do I have to go to the mall, to Bed Bath & Beyond, or wherever? It's just, it's 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 a new type of problem for retail. More than the economy, because people are clearly still spending money. Yeah. So. But do you not worry, though? I mean, and as a person who's been in real estate, and again, like I said, we had Grant here, and Grant talked about large-scale, you know, mm -hmm. real estate. Uh, whether that's hotels or large, you know retail spaces or commercial real estate you know that's the thing that scares me about it um i think about sears i think about kmart i think about some of our kind of institutional brick and mortar type of locations right the the, the stores that built 
America, so to speak, shutting down and at a yeah. really rapid rate, right? Yeah. Like, and these are the stores that led to the birth of, you know, the mall. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that anywhere else in the, in, the con in the world has malls the way America has malls, but they're taking up major swaths of real estate. Um, and we have some of the busiest malls in the world yeah, they're still, right here in they're South Florida. They're still expanding Aventura. Yeah. Every year they're expanding Aventura. Yeah, but like, Who's going in to fill these spaces? Like when I think about those 150 Bed Bath and Beyond locations, they're not really at an Aventura mall. They're in mini malls, right? Mm -hmm. But those mini malls are pretty big themselves. And usually, if there's, you know, I, I was talking to my mom about it recently, and it was like, if you see the Old Navy, you're usually going to see a TJ Maxx, a Michaels, a Home Goods. Like, you know, there's certain stores that all go up together. But Bed Bath and Beyond was one of those retailers that took up a massive space, like what 40, yeah. 50 thousand square feet. Who's going in there in 2022 to fill that space? It, it's going to be difficult. A lot of these, you know, America's become so used to being able to go to any retail store they want in a five-minute drive or mm -hmm. a 10-minute drive. <laughs> suburban so life. a lot of these little suburban stores are the ones that are going away. Mm -hmm. You know, Aventar Mall is not going to no. lose it. No, no, no. Boca's not going to lose it. But all these little places, so now people are going to have to drive a half hour to go to Bed Bath & Beyond instead of five minutes. So all of those little retail stores are going to get picked up by somebody else, and then they're going to be in there for 10 years, and then they're But they're not go. little. Like, that's, that's I think, my point. But I mean, like Kohl's, the, <clears throat> it's the one that's right here in, in Oakwood, uh, the Burlington. You know, those mm -hmm. stores come in. If they make it, they stay. I mean, the Kmart over here sat empty for three years. Yeah. You know, nobody was there. Now City Furniture picked it up. Mm -hmm. So, you know, eventually somebody's going to come along and do it. But it's going to it's going to send a ripple through the through the real estate, through the commercial real estate on on that retail level for sure. But that and I guess so. I mean, to my point as a person who Halloween now, store is going to take it every October. <laughs> well, well no, no offense. There's a Halloween every season. So yeah. not a Halloween, but Halloween and Christmas yeah. and Valentine's Day. Then, It'll be a pop up store. You for know, a while. Mother's Day, Easter, Fourth of July. I don't know. It just it, it scares. So you're worried me. about the landlords? I'm not worried about the landlords at all. I'm worried about the fact that that's another. You know, those that's thousands of people that are going to be without a job. Right, like when you're talking about twenty thousand, I think they said. Is it well? It's twenty percent. So I don't know. Is that is oh twenty percent? Yeah, it's twenty percent of their workforce is getting laid off. Um, but that's twenty percent on top of all the people who worked at Kmart. That's twenty percent on top of the people who worked at Sears at one point in time. The J.C. Penneys that are closing. I mean, the list really does go on. The Toys R Uses. But what made me laugh about the conversation because we actually talked about this on our radio show was the fact that you know, when Toys R Us closed down. People lost their minds. Like they yeah, took over Twitter. Pissed. Oh my God. But when was the last time, Lenny, you actually stepped foot in a Toys R Us? I'd go to Toys R Us at least twice a year. At least twice a year. At least twice well, a year. Well, twice a year is not keeping Toys R Us open. But that's the point is that there were a lot of people who hadn't been in Toys R Us in 10 years. Yes. And then were heartbroken that it was closing. But that is the story of, you know, American commerce right now. It's why Jeff Bezos is the most successful person on the planet. And I'm sure there's a lot of store owners screaming, Fuck you, Jeff. Um, because unfortunately, as much as we love Toys R Us, 90% of us weren't going anymore because we could go online, you know, the convenience of yes. just pressing add to cart and check out now. Um, but it's kind of like, how do we, I, I think that we're going to have to, something's got to give, no? Yeah, I think so. I think, well, I think we need to start maybe teaching our kids that you should touch things before you buy them. Which, but that's know, it's, it's that's kind a of, great point. It's kind of you know it, it's just it's kind of weird to me buying stuff online that I've never been in contact with. Well, okay, so let me you know, ask buying you the same thing over and over online. You know, well, like you 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 know exactly what size yeah. jeans you wear and yeah. you know the brand that you like. So going online to but I bought I bought them at a store and tried them on yeah. and wore them. But now you know, and it, yeah. if you're using that retailer online, yeah. that's one thing. But to your point, and I know you're an aesthetics guy. You went to design school, so I can I can imagine you wanting to know the feel of something, yeah, whether it's quality. furniture, whether it's linens, whatever the case may be. If it's the texture of something, and unfortunately, I don't think a lot of kids are even being raised to value those things. You know what I mean? Like, what is thread count when you're buying yeah. towels? Like, eh, I don't know, just it came in a bag. Like, you have those. Be what is it? <laughs> bed in a bag. You know, yes. like that. You could just go in and you get two pillow shams and a comforter and two sheets and whatever and it's just like you have yeah, no whatever. idea how it feels and 
hey, it was cheap. It all came, like it feels like we've kind of gotten into that that cycle. Yeah, people are country. people are more concerned with convenience over quality for one, mm-hmm. which is horrible because if well, you don't care about the more, quality, but it's of lesser quality. Yes. It's disposable. A lot of things are disposable nowadays. But that's leading to the trash issue. I mean, like that's again when we talk about we talk we, we end up having a lot of conversations about Yeah. Cycling. I was talking I was I I wanted to do an interesting exercise maybe in the next few weeks on just making a a list across the boards over there of of all the shit that's happened over the last three years that were like, you know, that everybody had a whole uproar about and oh, fight yeah. over and everything. And just look at it and go, holy shit. You know, this has been a tumultuous three years. Well, that that's we've what just we, had. The, the running joke, it's the hold my beer joke. Like, you know, we got through 2020 and 2021 said, here, hold my beer. And then we got through 2021 and 2022 mm-hmm. said, hold my beer. And 2022 continues to say, here, hold my beer. Like, every time we get to that point, we're like, no. Unless you live else. in Florida, we do whatever the fuck we want. Okay. No. Pretty much. Let me say, Florida has said, hold my beer on a numerous occasions uh, in 2022 alone. Like, uh, it's wild. Maybe you don't see it, it that way, but I. Side of the fence you're on. Yeah, I definitely. There's certain things that you and I, it's not even straddling. You are for sure on one, and I'm so far on the other side, I can't even see you anymore. Um, but it's all good. So that was that was one of the headlines, like I said, that I saw, and I figured I would ask you because I know you're the, the concern. So you're not concerned really about that, though? Like I'm concerned. Um, Are we going to turn all these malls into green space? No, I'm not. I don't. I'm not really that concerned about Bed Bath and Beyond closing. It's, it's not really, just Bed Bath and Beyond, though. I get it. It's but you know Staples, Fall, Sears. Sears was you know a catalog store in the early early. Sears and Robert, no, you bought everything at Sears. Yeah, but that was you know furniture, that was, clothes. That was the late 1800s, the early machine. 1900s. Yeah. they had a catalog. They were the Amazon of the day. It mm-hmm. took you six months to get it, not six hours. More, yeah, but more. it was, you know, it was the Amazon of the day. Mm-hmm. You bought it. You got a Sears catalog. And, you know, that ran its course. And everything does. I mean, there, there's big concerns that all the car dealerships are going to go away. Because they're like, what do we need car dealerships for? Mm-hmm. Tesla's already proven that you don't need a car dealership. They handle everything. Mm-hmm. They... They don't have to have big overhead and they have like three models though. Four, but it's it's <laughs> it's not the point is the car dealerships don't even have cars. Mm-hmm. I mean Ford announced that they're going to go away with the dealership. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I mean, those when you're talking about stuff like that. But again, how do you this is like Carvana. And these places where you literally go and you punch a code in and your car comes out of a freaking like a, a yeah, gumball machine. Pretty much. Like, Len, would you ever buy a vehicle without test driving it? Um, yes. <laughs> Only because, like, I bought the Charger without test driving it. I mean, we had a Charger years ago, but it wasn't the same one, but mm-hmm. I bought it without test driving it. It's, But, again, it goes back to it's going to be the same as Amazon. If you don't like it, send it back. You know, that's anything you get on Amazon, you can return it. It doesn't matter. Cars are not that easy to return. The, you know, it's not, I think, but they're going to have to deal with that. If they want to be without yeah. without dealerships, they're going to have to deal with that. Now, maybe they'll have, maybe they'll have. But like, then what happens to all the car, like, what happens to all the car salespeople? That, that, this, this is why I'm telling you, this is a bigger concern. That's because yeah. that is an enormous market that they're looking at. They're they're not. Well, they still have maintenance. They're looking at closing it down. They're gonna. I guess they're gonna have to figure out how to have some kind of warranty stuff. You know, I'm sure that makes no sense to me. How do you just like go online and go if you've never driven a Lincoln Navigator, if you've never driven a a Camry? Gets because people are people are buying Teslas. You can't go test drive a Tesla. Yes, you can. Well, yes, you can. Where? Here. Huh? Nick didn't go. Say that one more time. Nick didn't go. That does not. Does that surprise you? No. You're coming from. Is he not your blood? Yeah. Whatever. Did I not just ask you? Would you ever buy a car without test driving it? Yeah. And what was your answer? Of course. Okay. So yeah. No. You can definitely test drive a Tesla. I mean, listen. It's it's. I guess for some people, test driving it's really important. But you can read reviews on cars. You can. You know, I've been driving. I've been driving 
trucks my whole life, Ford trucks. I know that the this year model's Ford truck is going to be better than the one I drove three years ago when I bought that one new. So I don't care. If I want to order a new truck, I'll just order a new truck. I know what. Yeah, but you know what you're getting because you've already had it. But for the first well, time person, like, that was yeah. a whole, not to mention it was a rite of passage to go to a car dealership and to pick out your car and to kick the top, whatever, you know, stupid stuff. But this but goes like, back to the, the no, being just, in touch. This goes back to being in touch with things again. Yeah, but okay? you're just as guilty. Because, you bought a look, car without a test time, driving it. If it's a first time car for someone, right? Let's say this is their first car. Yeah. What are they fucking judging it against? What do they have to drive it for? They don't fucking know. They don't know what they're. They, they don't have anything to do. So judge they should just buy a lemon because they don't know. A any lemon better? is a different story. It's like how do you know it's a lemon? Like if my daughter at sixteen years old went to buy her own car, she would, would think the Hyundai daughter, drives fantastic. Would you let your daughter go to buy her own car by herself? No, I bought. I nice, bought her of car. Of course, I bought her why? car, she but have more experience. She didn't have any options on what it was or but did how you to take drive her with it. you. No, I did. I'm not, and, and that this isn't about buying kids' cars. What I'm saying is to, to that's a life. But that's it's a, about the desensitivity of the generation. They don't care anymore. They just buy but it. But neither do you. So you can't even blame that's, it on them. Because well, you just I did mean, the same thing. Yes, I did. Listen, if I wanted to go buy a new S Class, I don't have to test drive it. If I want an S Class, I'm getting an S Class. But how do you I even know, know you gonna... want an S Class without sitting in one and driving it? I'm just saying, I mean, really? I'm lucky enough, no, because I've driven all, like, I had a car endorsement where that's literally what I did. Every week, I drove a new car. But Was there any that you yes. wouldn't buy? Yes. What? So, I love, love, love the design of the Jaguar, but the Jag doesn't necessarily feel to me as heavy, like, as... as it's because it's British. As safe as some of the other cars that are of the same caliber or would be in the same class. Like, there were little things about the interiors of cars. Like, the Maserati, trash. Trash. Like, inside just feels cheap. Like, you may as well, and, and this is not a knock, because this is going to sound like a knock, but, like, you, you buy a Nissan. Buy an Infiniti. Is you get more. The Maserati still owned by Chrysler. You get more bang for your buck getting an Infiniti truck with a similar body style than you would buying that Maserati or upgrade and get the Porsche. You know what I'm saying? Like the Cayenne or the Macan or whatever. Um, so yeah, like, but that was that was such an incredible benefit to me because now when I buy, you know how many people have bought an S Class and don't know the damn car gives you a back rub? Do you have any idea how many people have bought that car and have no idea that the driver and passenger seat massage you? That's also why so many Mercedes owners look happy when they're sitting in traffic. Because they're getting a freaking back rub. And probably a blowjob. Maybe. Hey, but listen. You just can't see it. I literally sold cars to people at the dealership that I endorsed because I would tell them that. But you know what? Their staff did it. comes with a blowjob? No. <laughs> oh. that, it came, that it gave you a massage. <laughs> However, if you bought it, your wife might, if you bought it for your wife, she may give you a favor. Or maybe you'll give her one. I don't know. Um, the point is. That's a favor? In some households, Len, yes. Jesus Christ. In some households. I'd say that it, you know, there's people. I'm sure I have a meme saved. I give those twice a year, uh -huh. birthdays and anniversaries. Uh -huh. Um, not talking about myself, uh, but anyway, I appreciate that though, and I'm grateful that I know that. But and I wouldn't have necessarily known that had I not gotten to sit in. And when you're dropping a hundred thousand dollars on a car, yeah, you should know why the fuck you're dropping a hundred thousand dollars on a car. Like, that's silly. Like, we have no value for things anymore. Like, no. that's, this speaks to the bigger, again, the bigger conversation. It's like going online and buying a television, right? Like, I'm looking at TVs. And you can buy off of the size, right? So, 85-inch TV. $7,000 or 900 Yeah. Right? And how much do I know about TVs? Not a whole lot. I'm sure one is great for gaming. One is probably better if you want to, you know, watch incredible movies on it. The other one is perfect if you don't get fuck, if it's going to be outside, whatever. Like Coming from someone who's old enough to remember when the remote had push buttons on it, mm -hmm. <laughs> TVs are, you know, overrated. I mean, there's only, there's only so much quality you can get out of your TV before it looks like a video game. Well, no, and then some TVs are made literally for video games now. Yeah, so that but like the new 8K, and... the 8K they're shooting the NFL with last year. Uh -huh. Did you see some of that? It looks like a fucking video game. It looks like Madden. 
on the screen. If you have if you have a really high quality TV and you can see that 8K they're shooting in, it looks like Madden. That was the seven thousand dollar TV I was talking about. Was yeah. the 8K? Yeah. But like most people haven't even caught up to 4K yet. No. <laughs> so. No, it's like I tell my my friend went out was like dying to buy this five thousand dollar TV. I'm like, bro. You're coming off some hunk of shit that is <laughs> fucking three feet thick, mm -hmm. and you're buying, you know, you don't need that. I'm telling you, it's going to be a thousand times better if you buy the $500 well, one. If you would like to watch me and Len in high def, I highly recommend buying oh, absolutely. the $5,000 TV. But no, but it goes, but again, to circle back, like, I can remember going into, like, a Best Buy or... I don't know, a Sears back in the day, like with the family, like around the holidays oh, yeah, or whatever. Fair. I still take my kids. And you'd go and you'd look at, but no, and looking at the big TVs and then there'd be somebody there that could explain every nuance and every feature to you. And then remember they had like the home theater area that you could go sit in and they had like the recliner set up and you'd sit in there and it might even be one of those big, bo but it's like people used to enjoy. Imagine the germs on all those. Germs. Oh my God. Who cares? <laughs> Jesus. Everybody seems to I care I don't now. give up. I don't care. That's there was a viral TikTok of a guy wiping an escalator thing down. <laughs> it was ridiculous. I got hand sanny. We're good. Oh, okay. I got, I got a little hand sanny. I'm straight. Um, but no, like I feel like I feel like people are just missing out. And I'm an online shopper. Do not get it twisted. <laughs> I, I shop online too. I'm a horrible returner. Like I understand all the pros to, to shopping online, but I still do. Like when I do step foot in a mall, like I like the vibe. Like I like the yeah. energy. I like the people walking, watching. I love the smell of like walking by the food court. I love deciding where I'm going to go to eat before I leave. You know, like oh maybe I'll go to Cheesecake Factory or oh maybe I'll go to the Grill or whatever. I don't know. Um, I love. When they, I, I love that they keep expanding Aventura. I love when they add a new movie theater. Like, I started going back to the movies, obviously, because everything was like shut down. People go to the movies. Take mm -hmm. your family back. There is nothing like and, and I know that it's expensive. I know that it's it's a treat for some families now because it costs you easily a hundred bucks. For a family of four, yes. Easily. And if you do the 4DX seats, <laughs> no, you're looking at a buck fifty. For a night at the movies, because those tickets are like thirty dollars a I've pop. I've been to that theater. Have you been to that theater? Yeah, night? the new theater. Yeah, it's my cool. kids have been there. But what makes me sad? This nobody works there. Nobody works there. like when you when you walk into movie theaters now, you go to the kiosk and you get your tickets from a machine. There's a couple people that are working making popcorn and stuff like that, and maybe there's somebody scanning your ticket if you don't scan it yourself. Like that used to be the place that again. Kids would get jobs. You'd work there in the summer. Like, that was, you know, your friends worked at the movie theater, like, whatever. It's just, it's wild to me. Like, we're taking away all of these opportunities for people to socialize. We're taking away all of these opportunities for people to learn customer service. We're taking away all of these opportunities for people to have these experiences that many of us grew up on thinking, like, that that was what made life in this country great. Yeah, talking to people. Yeah, but the movie, the movies are an own, integral part yes. of of. I've been running my Americana. Own social experiment because mm -hmm. I've been walking every morning at the park, mm -hmm. and I try and say hi to everybody I pass, and I walk the opposite does way. Some people make people, does it make people feel uncomfortable? Some people, some people don't ever look up, but I walk the opposite way of the way it says. It says walk this way. Oh. Um, I walk the opposite <laughs> way so that I can see everybody that's walking. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of there's like maybe two of us that walk the opposite mm -hmm. direction, you know. And it's funny, you know, it's the weather changes the way people mm -hmm. talk in the morning. Some people it took like maybe seeing me A five or times. six so times the before they would say good morning. The wrong way. You know, okay. and but it's it, it it's really weird. It's really it. it it blows my mind how some people who I've seen literally 15 times still won't speak to you. Still don't say good morning. Do you still say good morning to them? Of course. So you say it every time. I say it to everybody. To everybody. You know, there's a this nice little Spanish lady. She's like, what is it? Buenos noches? That's yeah. good night. Nice yeah. try. Buenos well, what dias. Is, what's good morning? Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Yeah, she says buenos dias every morning. Why did he? Am I, what, I'm telling what you. What does it matter? What, 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 I'm am saying I saying buenos to dias know? repeatedly, and oh. you continue to look at Nestor. What? You don't uh, take my word for it? I don't know. Buenos noches. Noches night. Oh. Okay. Buenos dias. Dias day. Okay. Oh, 
Oh, sorry, my little <sighs> my goodness gracious. Cuban influenced friend. Oh. <laughs> How disrespectful, Nestor. That I know she's a very nice lady. Okay, but I say good morning to her. She says Buenos dias, and you they know it's just, just don't it, it's just it blows me away that people are just not nice. There's the people with the resting bitch face that just mm -hmm. like really wait. What are you so angry about? You know, you're going for a walk. It's beautiful out. What are you? What are you so? Why are you so? You look like you're you know constipated. Why do you think people don't say hi? I have no fucking idea. I have no idea. You're in an open public setting. Mm -hmm. It's like, are you? What are you scared of by by being nice to someone that you might never see again? Mm -hmm. What What is the problem? I mean, it's not like they're stopping you and forcing you to say hello. They're just, you know, you're passing by them on a walk. Mm -hmm. What does it hurt to to be Do you nice? Think that that's gotten worse. Yes, I think it has. Yeah, I think it. I think it definitely has. I think that's part of the disconnect in society. Do you think that your kids would say hello to people? Would they walk in the opposite direction and just speak to strangers and say hi? Mm. Mm. Yes, I think they probably would. I think they. I think they're probably more outgoing than some kids, um, and I think they probably. You know, that, that just goes to basic manners. I don't know that they would necessarily embrace it mm -hmm. like I do. I just do it for fun, just to see what fucking people will do. But I, I don't think they would embrace it like that. But I think if someone said good morning to my kid, they would say good morning back. Well, they, yeah. would, they would engage. Okay. They would, they would engage, saying. you know, which I think a lot of – and the younger people out there – which there's not many of, but they they tend oh, at the to park. yeah they tend to, you know well yeah you could still it's it's funny to see because it's all different types of people walking, mm -hmm. you know and it's it's just funny to see who's nice who's not mm -hmm. you know who just acknowledges you know even even if it's not hot, good morning it's like you know hey what's up you know, mm -hmm. just a nod a nod head, like yeah acknowledge just that acknowledge that, you, that, that there's the another person. human being crossing your path. It's that that's going away, and that's the, that's fucking scary. That's scary because that goes right back to our main conversation here of people not being able to sit in the same room if they have one belief that's different. Mm -hmm. One. I mean, again, you know, most of this country, most of the people, if you really sat down and wrote down your core belief system, most of them would have a lot in common. But don't you kind of feel that part of that, like when, like we talked about, though, like the more insulated you are, the less open-minded <clears throat> you're most likely going to be. So as we shut down stores, as people no longer are working with different types of people, because remember, say you needed a second job. So say you worked one job that wasn't cutting it, so you had to get a second job. So you work in an office with one type of person, right? Or, or you know, mm -hmm. kind of a similar corporate type of person. Yep. And then you go and you work in a retail store. So you might be working with kids. You might be working with maybe more immigrants who know first, you know, the people, you're working an overnight shift or a late night shift or something. Strip stocking club. shelves, whatever. Sure, strip club, bouncing, I don't know. Um, you know, but you're you're forced outside of your comfort zone or that, that typical nine to five experience that you have. Even with kids, right? Like, you get a job. Like, I was at Cali Coffee the other day, which... I wish they had Cali coffees everywhere. I don't know how they do it. <clears throat> they have the most incredible staff. I think that you would probably agree. I don't know if, how often you go there. Yeah, Miranda, two of Miranda's good friends and our family friends work. They're one incredible. Manages, like, one manages the one in Cooper City, and the other one works here. But I, I literally had to do a post on my Insta story about it, and I was like, first of all, if you're not having Cali coffee and you live in South Florida, you're missing out. Secondly... If by chance a resume comes across your desk and it says former employment, the Cali copy, at least on 29th Avenue in Hollywood, Florida, hire that hire that individual on the spot because customer service through the roof. They always have a smile. They don't care about standing out in the sun, taking your orders in the line. They always engage the customer. They always, you know, if you look like you're struggling or what what's good here, they can always recommend. Like it's just coming from a, a family owned business and looking at that. It's precious. And then when you see their camaraderie, 
And mm-hmm. I'm sure they've probably got little beefs here and there or whatever, as every place does. But they really seem like they genuinely have a good time working at their job and, and things, mm-hmm. you know, like. Yeah, they look like they're happy to go to work. Yeah. It's like and a cult. I, it, <laughs> <laughs> you're not lying. It's it's incredible. Um, but it's like I feel like those opportunities are dwindling more and more and as the economy gets crazier and things get tighter you have more adults vying for those you know these types of positions so again if you're looking for qualification or you feel like helping somebody out or so that that Kylie coffee job like I told you my two family friends girls young girls worked there the one started there worked this one I think for two years and then became the manager at the other one. Mm-hmm. So there is there's room in that company to grow, mm-hmm. but only so far, but it's 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 geared for very young yeah. people. This is a stepping stone. Mm-hmm. They know that's not a job that they're going to make a career for the most part. Mm-hmm. It's a stepping stone. So, you know, they have their peers that they're hanging out with at mm-hmm. work and it's kind of a fun environment and yeah, it could be cool, but you don't get that anymore at McDonald's or Well, no. or the mall or but it's also like an invaluable skill set going back to your point like every person that comes i bet you all of those kids if you were to pass them in the park len and say good morning to them they would say good they morning. would say good morning and then the next time they saw you they're like hey nice shoes yes like they they would notice something else because this is the experience that they're getting in the workplace right like these kids are just when i tell you they are being set up for success yes um just because of the tools that they're being given. And I'm sure they were something that they came to the job with and they're just being sharpened, right? Mm-hmm. Like it, it but and, and everybody has it. But if you're never forced to use it or expected to use it or taught how to use it, like you don't sharpen that. And that's where you have people walking around the park not saying hello. Yep. And the more, you know, the more we lose these interpersonal skills, like before. Every every sales job was an interpersonal face to face knocking on doors. Like, right? The salesman started making house calls, yeah. whether it was knives or vacuum cleaners or chocolates or whatever it was. These mofos got on a train and traveled around the country with their, the door. with their little suitcase. Hey, this is what I'm selling today, right? Like, and had to interact face to face with people. Now it's call centers that aren't even here in the country, you know, around the world. Like, it's just, it's wild to me because. When that was the main source of, I guess, I don't know if that's white collar employment, because you always had the plumbers and the contractors and the people who did like blue collar, you know, kind of trade skills. That's a little bit different. And even with that, you still have to interact with people. If you're fixing somebody's toilet, you still have to have a conversation with them. But I just. A shitty one. <laughs> but I'm changed. <laughs> I, I don't know. I just, I'm sad. I'm sad. And, and I know that I keep going back to the Bed Bath and Beyond thing, but it's just, it's speaks to a bigger problem in this country and I just that's making me more nervous is you know as retail stores close down that to me is a is a foundational part of um, the American workforce right like and as these places close and people lose out on these opportunities it's not just money to your point Len it's interaction it's it's relationship it's you know being able to communicate and converse with people that you would not otherwise run into because you don't have to Mm. in your house, right? We can be very selective in every other walk of our life with who we engage with, but you can't at work. Yeah. You can't when you have to physically go out and go shopping, right? Like when I go to Publix, I have zero control over who my deli person is. I have zero control over who the guy stocking the shelves is, over who my cashier is, right? So here I am having these conversations with people, whether it's help or just a casual, hey, how are you doing? You know, it helps you to realize that everybody is a person. Facts. And, you know, everybody's the same. We all bleed red. We do, but what do you do, like... How do you fix it? Yeah. Ah, good luck with that. Like, but... but is so You vote for me for president. Okay. Well, how about I move? Can I just move? <laughs> Where to? <laughs> I don't Where know. are you going to move to? I don't know. Where, where are people nice? No, I'm going to go... Like, I'm uh, moving to Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. I don't know. Master was telling me about a friend who's got a cheap house there. Oh. I was like, hey, sounds good to me. Um, you could commute. What? You could commute. I could from here. You could just stay on Laz's couch when you're here. Yeah. All right. No, all right. Just go to, listen, I could take my, but even with that, 
Lenny, even with my job, a job that you would think, no, you have to be in a studio, right? Like, yeah. this is, no. We had one guy who was in Europe for a month doing his show in the U.S. from Europe for a mm -hmm. month. Half the big, the big dogs that have been doing radio for decades, after pandemic, they were like, <laughs> you think I'm good? <laughs> no. I built myself a studio. I'm good. Maybe once a week they're in, they're in the actual studios. Mm -hmm. But that changes the dynamic. And then when you ask them to go out into the streets, into the community, like, into ooh. the public, it's like, wait a minute. People? <laughs> what? Yeah. I don't understand. It's the pussification of America. That's not even the pussification. Of, that's is, the anti-socialization of yes, America. Yes, but that's all part of it. It's all part of it, Annie. It's mm -hmm. all part of keeping people apart. Because people who are apart can't share ideas and can't come across things. I mean, we sit here, we have, you know, my mandatory Tuesday fucking in the office meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay? There's a reason for that. Mm -hmm. We sit and look at each other's face and bullshit and talk about stuff that would never, ever, ever come up if we weren't in the same fucking room. Yeah. So that... Being together and knowing that everybody's on the same page and, you know, knowing what people are thinking because they can't hide it. Mm -hmm. They can't. You can't hide your reaction when somebody says something. Facts. It's I just really it's there. You know, so that I don't I can't see how you could build a team. That that's creative and that's in tune with each other without actually physically being there. Somewhat. And it, it's, you know, if you separate that, you separate the people, then you can put them in their own little boxes. This group is this group. 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 And you know what? We don't have to worry about those groups because they're never going to fucking talk to each other. That's how you can put the, the whatever on this side and whatever on this side. And there's no middle anymore. There's no retail where... You know, you have to serve. But what is the where point? you have but to serve I, but the white guy, the white girl, but the black girl, the, the black guy. The, but explain you know. to me the the large scale point of all of this derisiveness, this division at the cost of the economy. Like that. That's I guess the the bigger question. As you say, like oh, it's a big plan. It's a big scheme. Like when we talk about the movie theaters closing down, when we talk about these retail stores closing down. Like at the end of the day, this is the American economy. Like we are a blue collar country. Like it goes back. So who can go to the movies now? You just mentioned. Yeah. Who can go to the movies now? What's going to be left of movie theaters? That's the point, though. I'll tell you what's going to be left. I pick. You go to a bougie fucking dinner. You get some bougie seats at the movies, mm -hmm. and you know who's going to be able to go. Only people with money. That's what it's boiling down but to. But why? Uh, you know, who knows why? There's, somebody's got a big picture they're playing. You know, there's there's stuff. No, but it's also, but it, you, you can't blame everything on the they. No. Like, you have to, at, at some point, we have to take a little bit of responsibility. <clears throat> it's like Toys R Us. You don't get to get mad that Toys R Us closed down all of its stores if you stop shopping at Toys R Us. You don't get to get mad at the movie theaters yeah. having to raise the price of tickets because nobody's going to the movies. You know what I mean? Like, so we yell about it being too expensive, but then we don't go, and it only gets more expensive. So, with that being said, it's like, how do we start to prioritize things like that? Like, you're sitting there talking about the experience and in person and the tangibility of things and touching and feeling, yet you still bought a car without test driving it. And you have children that watched you do that. You said your son just did the same thing. Like, so, Len, you're not helping. Yeah, but, yeah. When's the last time you took the family to the movies? First of all, I used to take my family to the movies almost weekly. Mm -hmm. When did that stop? It stopped when the kids were about 12 or 13, and then they're like, I don't want to go to the movies. Uh, I took Joey to 007. Me and Joey have gone to probably more premieres than any of the others. Mm -hmm. But any Star Wars premiere, we all go on opening night, no matter what. I love that, yeah. And uh, Marvel, pretty much the same. So we go on opening night. So, you know, I take them. But they don't want to go see every movie anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to take them to all the movies that were coming out. Mm -hmm. with and, it, and at one point, there was... You know, a good movie, but none of them wanted to see Maverick. 
Mm. You know, I ended up seeing it with Joey. Did he end up liking it? Yeah, he liked it. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> you know, I would have <laughs> if they were if times. they were twelve and ten. Yeah, they would have saw it with no problem. I would have drug them there and. Yeah. Did they go with their friends though? Now, do they? Now that they're teenagers, up, upper level teenager, mid level yeah. teenagers, they're going to the movies with their friends. I hated the movies. I hate the movies, Dad. I don't ever want to go to the movies. Really? Because now you're going to the movies yeah. with your friends. That's even like bowling. Like yeah. bowling is fun too. Like bowling is like yeah. a blast. And I'm I have my own ball because I don't like sticking my you know like I have my own bowling shoes and my own. Bowling you don't like ball. sticking your fingers in other people's balls. No. Not at all. Only in your balls. Only in the balls that I know and love. You know what I'm saying? Only in balls I clean. Like, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I but I do enjoy it. I'm not like fantastic at it. You know what I mean? But like, I have fun. I think it's a great time with your friends, and you can do it. Like, there's bougie bowling, but there's also still, you know, relatively inexpensive bowling alleys yeah. where you Benbrook can. Pembroke and Dixie. Yeah, I'm, but I'm scared I mean, to walk in there. No, isn't there like? The, but Spares isn't bad. Like in Davy, is isn't that the one no, in Davy? Nice, yeah. You know, and it's nice, and it's not overly. It's not like going to lucky. Like Lucky Strike can run you some cash. Like certain, you know, bougier bowling alleys. But like again, a fun night for for people that are employed and have the money to do it. But I love that your kids that are in high school are starting to go back to the movies with their friends. Yes. Like that makes me happy. I forgot because, like I said, I get to go to movies because of my job and I premieres and things like that, like hosting. Um, but like going to see Top Gun after not really having been in a movie theater for a while because of pandemic like I loved it like and now I've been to the movies probably like seven times just because there's been a lot of movies you know coming out and I'm like more people should really do this like it's fun and it just I, it feels very American like yeah. going to the movies feels yeah. very American when you know that that was a thing that poor people could do like the movies was the poor I mean, man's the escape is still around but it went away. But there's still a drive-in. Well, and they do. Oh, they have. Um, they have outdoor movies on Miami Beach. They have like an outdoor. I think it's like on the top of a, a hotel. And they were actually doing another one right before pandemic hit that I was loving. It was um, in downtown Miami, right, like um, where the cruise ships are and everything. Oh my god. Yeah, they have it at Bayfront Park. It was gorgeous. Yeah, they have it set up here at Dania Point. They had it set up. Did they on the side of? Uh, you know where Lucky's yep. was? Yep. On the side of that wall, people would go out. And, and they do it in, in Hollywood, too. They do it at Young Circle, like, every mm -hmm. Friday night. But, again, it's sad, though, that more people don't do it. Don't actually bring their families because it's free. You can go hang out. People bring their lawn chairs. They bring picnic baskets. They bring coolers. And it's dope. But it's just one of those things where, again, it's getting to know your community. It's getting out and socializing. Yeah, I'm happy. People are scared they're going to bump into somebody with a Trump hat or a Biden hat. It's really. Do you really that's, think that's what it is? I think that's part of it. I think that's part of it. I think people, most people inherently don't want confrontation. And they're going to feel maybe some kind of way when they see other people. But it's funny to me because you go to a sporting event, right? And it doesn't, at that point, it doesn't matter. You go to a concert, it doesn't really matter. Like, because you're there and you're either rooting for the same team or you're rooting again. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, but you're there for a, to enjoy a game mm -hmm. and it's insane because and for cares. four hours nobody cares you're at a concert you're there to hear music be entertained nobody cares you know and and to me that's the beauty of entertainment and that's the movies you go to the movies and it's escapism right like you get to go there and you're sitting in these comfy seats and you've got your popcorn and you're just you get to get away for a couple of hours and those are just things that i think are again inherently American that we're getting away from, but they're also a big part of our economy. And if yes. they close or they go away, that has, you know, a snowball effect on other things. Yeah, it's funny because I, I went to Joey's first game was in Marco Island. Mm -hmm. And we went there and I was shocked they played the national anthem at the game. Why? Because I hadn't heard it at a game locally in a long time. It was like it wasn't even a thing. Have you been to the start of the games? Yeah, here. Are you sure? Well, yeah, I'm positive. You're showing up on time. I'm positive because I, I looked at Rachel and she's like, and I'm like, that's, you know, and it was great. And then now they're playing it here again. Um, but for a while, it was kind of, you know, people were kind of weird about it. No, I've never, I don't know. I haven't been to a sporting event. Maybe it was just Florida. Where no, I go only to in Florida. Florida. Like that guy. At least I got it on my flip phone. 
I don't know what that is. But <laughs> Some TikTok guy. I thought you were going to say do with a sign or something. But no, <laughs> um, the national anthem is mandatory at all yes. sporting events. Like. It's mandatory, period, and it. Well, no, yeah, I mean, I don't need country. the national anthem when I walk into work every day. Like, I'm okay. <laughs> I don't need to. Like, no, I'm good. You could sing it to me. Dealing with you, but they're taking it out of schools. You know, the Pledge of Allegiance out of schools. I. But when was, was the last time that they? I don't know. Did we, I don't even remember if we were doing the pledge who? every day. Who? In high school. In a, well, when, high school. Does it I think, stop? Does it stop in middle school? I don't know, but it's. I, I remember it when I was in school. No, I remember doing it in elementary school. I just, I would, that would, that would be an interesting thing to look. I just don't remember. Just curious. If we I were. bet they still do it in some states. But we definitely did it at like every high school sporting event. Oh my yeah. God, you definitely had the national anthem. We didn't do the pledge, yeah. but we the had pledge the of allegiance anthem. used to be in every school. I bet it was. I bet it's still in some schools. But like even when I host stuff, like if I host stuff for the school system, like we do the national anthem mm-hmm. and we do the pledge of allegiance. Yeah, I think it's important. Yeah, but they're pushing it. They're pushing. They're pushing that, you know, because people are. Why do you make everything political, Len? Why do you make everything? I'm not making it political. Someone else is talking about Bed Bath and Beyond. And now we ended. Now we ended up on Biden and Trump hats again. Yeah, well, you know, that that's that's. Are you trying to make me angry? No. Trying to make me angry. So anyway. uh, Well, I like you when you're angry. You love me when I'm angry. You're you're evil like that. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm like Pinky in the brain. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. So anyway, yeah, interesting conversation today. I sent you a lot of headlines. Like I said, the the one about Bed Bath and Beyond just felt kind of like the '80s. I was a little nervous from an economic standpoint and the stock market because it felt like that. Seeing yeah that reaction from a CEO, a CFO, just was like, okay, so what am I missing? We had somebody in here a few weeks ago mm-hmm. that's totally in tune with the real estate market, mm-hmm. and what did he say? He said, I'm going to do better in real estate in the upcoming six months than I've done in my entire life. So what does he know that we don't know? What do the billionaires know that we don't know? Mm -hmm. Well, usually when you do well in real estate, isn't that because there's a crash? Pretty much. Right? It's, you know, because it's going to. It ends up being foreclosure, short sales. Yes, things are going to change the economy is the economy is ready for a hiccup but that individual also said that the middle class like is either a non-existent or is not something that you should you know strive for and there were some interesting there were some interesting comments yeah regarding that do you do you agree with that though because, like, like, again, yes. to, to the Bed Bath & Beyond, to the 20% of people that are being laid off. There's more, let's just say, this is the middle class. I would bet there's more people in the middle class that are a few paychecks uh, away from being broke than not. Mm-hmm. So if you're in that position, if you're in this middle class and your job goes away as, as let's just say, you are a... Upper level management mm-hmm. at Bed Bath and Beyond. Yeah, and you're making seventy five thousand yep. dollars a year at Bed Bath and Beyond. Yep, and your job goes away, you're done. You're no longer middle class. You just drop to the bottom of the food chain mm-hmm. because where are you walking out of there and getting into well, and getting back. into something else? So, I think that's kind of what he means by the middle class. You know, these are these. This is a, a group of people in this country that are, you know. On, on this path that if they have no security going forward mm-hmm. and someone pulls the rug out from underneath them, they could be in bad shape. And it's it's been exaggerated by the fact that this country was shut down for two years. Mm-hmm. You know, that exaggerated it because those, you know, a lot of people spent all their savings living for the last two mm-hmm. years. But do you also, I, but do you think that we do enough to protect the middle class, because I really do believe, like, yes, we have more millionaires than ever before in this country and around the world right no, now. No, I don't think we do anything to protect them. I don't think we educate them properly. I don't think we give them the tools to succeed no matter what the economy's doing. No, I don't think 
that we but this, but protect so, them. But so this is really, I think, the heart. And I'm and the soul. middle class, that's as far a, as I'm this concerned. This is the heart and soul of what I came in kind of wanting to talk about, and that's what is so fearful to me because not everybody is. And, and I love, I love Grant. Not everybody is going to have a private jet. Not everybody's going to have a four hundred and fifty thousand dollar, you know, Rolls Royce SUV. Easy. What? Okay. I'm, you, I thought you were referring to me. No, <laughs> you can be the one that has it. What I I'm saying try. is, that, and not everybody aspires to that Correct. though. And Correct. there's nothing wrong. That with him. Like, like we don't need to be a na- like right now. Part of our problem is we're a nation of excess, right? Like everybody wants to consume more than they actually a have the capacity to consume and b can afford to consume. Um, and that mentality, in my opinion, kind of feeds into that because there's also a a a certain drive it's the same thing you asked me why aren't there more women in finance and there's many reasons for that and i think it's getting better but there's a certain level like there's just a certain build like there's certain characteristics and qualities in a person that are necessary in order to succeed in that field in that world male or female it doesn't matter you have to be built similarly right in order to mm-hmm. be successful there are certain traits that you got to check and there are certain traits that you have to check to be a grant to be a lenny and not everybody again not everybody aspires to that some people Correct. really do just want a house they want to be able to put food on the table they want to be able to put their kids through school or or help them get a trade and they want to be able to retire and not have to worry about literally ending up under a bridge somewhere and not being a burden on their children right like there's a lot of people that just want to live it's not about having the most on the street it's not about having the biggest house it's not about necessarily family trips to Vail or aspen or the south of france like that doesn't appeal to some people what's caused that middle class to want to aspire to be like that what's caused that middle class to want to have the best the the newest sneakers the newest outfit the newest this the newest what's caused that what what has pushed the middle class to and i know i know people that would fall clearly into the middle class that have had a job have saved for their retirement are you know they're going to be more than comfortable mm-hmm. in their retirement they don't have you know they don't have brand new car every six months they don't have you know the latest sneakers but they live very nicely mm-hmm. very comfortable they go to dinner whenever they want mm-hmm. they do whatever so there is a percentage of the people like that mm-hmm. But there's the other percentage that's, you know, chasing whatever they're chasing. And they're going to keep themselves in that. You know, it's like it's like Grant's head. And it's if you listen to what he said, it's it's the they are the most the that's the whole Manchurian candidate thing. They are the most guided and controlled. suppressed and controlled people in this country. And they're controlled by advertising. They're advertising. Probably. They're controlled. Yeah. They're pushed however they need to be pushed in whatever direction mm-hmm. they want to be. So when you have that and people buying into that on the daily, you know, the American dream is just being able to choose what you want to do. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to do this. Okay. But Great. we're taking a lot of those options away. And I guess that's that's kind of like when you talk about being able to yeah. make being able to support your family managing a bed bath and beyond, right? We're taking that option away. And when we close down brick and mortar stores, when we, you know, out I don't want I don't I don't even I mean, know what to say. You're from the northeast, right? Mm-hmm. So I went on, I went to New York on a trip with Rachel and Joe uh, Nick one time and we got on the train in Manhattan and we rode to Poughkeepsie and I was talking to this guy on the train because people would talk to you then Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) and the guy rides the train for two fucking hours Mm -hmm. both directions every fucking day Mm -hmm. Uh, four hours out of this guy's day five days a week is commuting Mm -hmm. to his job Mm -hmm. that's normal for a lot of people yeah it's normal in South Florida too you know that right mm, Commuting in South Florida is sitting in not traffic. Four, not four hours. It's still no, Lenny. If you but, live in Pinecrest and work in Hollywood and have a a, a typical nine to five, you're in traffic an hour and a half each way. Yeah, for sure. Well, and there's a lot of people. I mean, there's I mean, there's that, a lot of people it, that do that. That's what it boils down to. The middle class being able to live is they have to live farther outside of that 
spectrum. I mean, mm -hmm. it was Weston and and Pembroke Pines for mm -hmm. a long time was an affordable area where people could buy houses. That you know, the whole market. But this here isn't a utopian crazy. world that we live in. There's always no. going to be haves and there's always going to be have nots. The beauty of this country was there was a large group of people in the middle that lived very comfortably in the I have, but not necessarily excessively, but I had more than the not, you know, and that division, that that gap is widening greatly. Greatly, like literally I pulled up an article and, and we're not going to get into it deeply today, but po the poverty line now is considered $52,000 a year for two adults and two children. If you're making less than that or bringing in less than that into your household, you're living below the poverty line. There was a time when if you were bringing in 50 grand a year to your house, hold, you were good. You were middle class. 50 grand a year would buy a lot of beer. Lenny, please be no, serious. I don't know. Where does that line from? Where does that from? From the 80s. <laughs> Len, I was one. <laughs> it's a song. I don't know. What song is it? Uh, what song is it? Jesus. Now you're making me dig deep in my fucking memory banks. Well, then uh, don't quote obscure lines. From no, obscure it's not obscure. It was one knows. of the most popular songs it ever. It that popular. It certainly wasn't, you know, Toto Africa, because uh, I know those words. The future's so bright, I got to wear shades. Oh. The only thing I know from that is my future so <laughs> Yeah, 50000 a year will buy a lot of beer because that's what he was talking about making when he mm -hmm. came out of school. But, but that, now fifty grand a year yeah. is poverty. I get it. I get it. So, if but if the workforce doesn't adjust, years later. do you know what I mean? But if the workforce doesn't adjust, then how does everybody keep up? How does everybody catch up? Like, I that's why... When, when we're talking about this and you have, I don't want to call them entry-level jobs, but, you know, a place where you could go. Supposedly at Costco, you make $27 an hour to be a cashier. I'm not mad at that. But when you th put it in perspective, yeah, that's barely make. you know what I'm saying? That's if you poverty. Got, but $27 a year used to be like, oh, you. $27 an hour. Yeah, an hour, sorry. But $27 an hour was you were making money. Like, that was yeah. a good job. So it's just, it's wild, but it's like we need, sometimes we need to go back and we need the reality check of where we're at economically and then people have to adjust. Like you're a business owner. Like when you look at that, it, you know, hey, I, I pay my employees great. Oh, really? What's the average salary? Oh, 50 grand a year. Like, no, it's not, that's not great anymore. That used to be great. Yeah, but it's, you know, it's, eight, you're going to drive some of those businesses out of business because they can't afford to keep up with that, with that kind of, rate it's got to be there's got to be a give and take you know there's got to be yeah, the give and take there's got to be well there's got to be you know in entry-level jobs have to be entry-level people mm -hmm. you know i mean when you were going to college if you didn't you know if you didn't but that but the middle class you didn't need college like you could be middle class like again you could be a salesperson with your suitcase knocking on a door and that was going to get you the house with the white picket fence and the buick in the driveway granted it was only going to be one buick it wasn't going to be a buick for everybody in the house you know what i'm saying again priority shifted a little bit but there was a time when a sales per college was legitimately for the upper echelon right like then we said oh everybody should go to college and now everybody comes out and has debt, right? And so now you're coming out of college and still making $25,000 a year. Or now I've now incurred college debt and there's a person working at a Wendy's making $20 an hour and I'm making 15 because I'm in an entry level position. Yeah, but are we teaching our kids any skills? Are we teaching, are we teaching, is our school system teaching any kids how to be successful? I mean, is there anything in our educational system that we should be fighting to have when we're fighting over bullshit. What do you mean? I, I mean, mean, I mean, our basic education system from kindergarten through twelfth grade. I mean, grade. but I, but I also think it's important to say, listen, like, not everybody has to be Grant Cardone. Like, no. not everybody. But that's the problem. Is that this? You, you love to talk about yeah. the, the phone, what we're fed through through marketing and advertising is that we've created this sense that you have to have all of this excess in order to be happy. Right. Or that, you know, everybody's going to be. A, and that's just not that's not true anywhere 
in the world. It's not true. And this was a place where there was a time when the average Joe, the average Jane, Jesus, Maria, whoever, could have a very good life. And it didn't mean that they were overly educated, but it meant that they had access to education if they wanted it, right? You could have a trade skill. You could work for the county. Like, you had jobs that kept that, that kept the social, you know, the, the, the system going. And we've taken a lot of those. There's no more tolls, right? Like, so that was a job that paid somebody a nice salary. Mm. We don't have that anymore. You had county employees that we've found ways to, to minimize or mitigate those. You know, it's like you're looking at Detroit where we used to make cars. We're looking at the textile and the fashion industry and we've outsourced all of those. And it's like slowly but surely the people that kept, because we keep the economy going. The middle class keeps the economy going. The rich are going to say, Richard, they're going to jump out of windows. Sorry. Mr. CFO, mm. like it is what it is. But is that? Yeah. And Grant said that. Grant yeah. said, you know, the guy that's got a million dollars, like that's middle class now. It's wild when you yeah. think about that, right? Like that's that's the crazy part about where we're at in 2022. So the super wealthy aren't worried about it, and the super poor are aren't worried about it, in the sense that, yeah. They've probably thrown their hands up there, like whatever. It's the folks on the hamster wheel in the middle, but we're the people that buy the night. We're like we're the people that do those things. We're the people that go to Disney World and spend a year's savings on a family trip or more, right? How like long, how long have they been talking about the middle class going away? It's been a long time. You know, the middle class in this country has been dying since the seventies. It's been happening. It's been, you know, the unions going away, the auto manufacturers outsourcing. All of this stuff has happened over the last 40 years, and all of a sudden everybody's waking up and saying, huh, where's the middle class gone? It, it's gone. It's going away. But then, but you say that, like, that's not okay. Like, that's a very big problem. Uh, yeah, no shit. That's a very like, and that's why I, I it's a I'm, real problem that nobody wants. But to that's talk about. but that's why I'm fearful. So like when I see the 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 bed bath like I that worries me, Lennon. It worries me for many reasons. It worries me for the the twenty percent of the people that are no longer gonna have jobs. It worries me for this big empty retail space that's not gonna get filled to employ more people. Right, like there's so many cyclical things that worry me about that. The least of which is that very wealthy CFO who was cooking the books, jumping out of his window. Sorry, not sorry. Um, you know what I mean? Like, like the, the, the bigger picture ramifications of what this says about our economy and what we built this country on. That's the stuff that scares me. And yes, we could go back to infrastructure because we certainly need it. And that would be nice if our government would actually put some of those resources there and shore that stuff up and employ people to yeah. do those jobs. Let's that's put, incredible. Let's put $80 billion into the road system. But here's the deal. <laughs> How do we convince this next generation of kids that those are jobs that they want? Because that's the other thing. It's teaching your kids, and I'm pointing at you, but teaching kids that being a plumber is cool and is going to, and is going to, secure your future, the future of your family, and everything else. That being an electrician and a carpenter or a welder, an underwater welder, that all of this is actually dope and smart and is job security <laughs> and job longevity and you can make really good money. Like, I grew up in that kind of community, as I'm sure, you know, Yeah. did you? I mean, coming from- I mean, from mechanics, I mean, I started out in AC. Started out doing AC. Well, the people that build I've the vents and do the duct work. I was 16 years old. But when I was 18 years old working air conditioning, I was making 20 bucks an hour in 1983. Mm -hmm. I was making 20 bucks an hour. I have a young cousin, not that young, but he's going to be 40, I think. He's been doing AC for 20 years, and he makes $30 an hour. But are you ready? Though? Len, we stopped. we stopped valuing those jobs, though as a society, and we started putting more emphasis on the guy who sits at the keyboard, which is cool. The person with the education is dope, and we're going to need a lot more blue-collar tech people to keep these massive computer systems going, which is why coding is so important in our schools and things like that. That's a different conversation. But we started 
turning our nose up to the construction workers, to the blue collar guys, to the, you know, the painters that were members of unions and things of that nature. Like, and that to me is sad because that was something that I always grew up, my first boyfriend, like his dad owned a welding company. They did duck work, right? He's passed that that business down to three generations. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And his son went to a vocational high school, became a welder, can also make furniture, had a little side hustle while he was working for his dad. Then he ended up taking over. You know, I think he does chimney shit now, like, or whatever. But in the Northeast, everybody's got fireplaces, mm -hmm. so that's good work. And I came from that kind of community. But the plumbers that I knew cleared 150 grand, 200 grand a year. You know what I'm saying? Like down here, they were giving away free education at FIU. And I don't know if people knew this. They didn't want, they didn't care about your paper status. They were offering you 10 week courses at FIU in their, their mm -hmm. school of engineering or construction to basically give you like a crash course in all things construction so that when these big jobs for these high rises came up, you could kind of go in and do fill in whatever needed to be done. But you were going to get, you know, your your what is certification for electrician, for plumbing, for basic mm -hmm. stuff. You couldn't go be a general that's contractor. What the, that's what the unions used to do. The unions, you would have, be an apprentice in the union and you'd learn from somebody above you. And that that craftsmanship and that that handmade thing is going away. Well, yeah, because now we have Ikea. Yeah. But again, it's but it, but it goes back to what you said. It's about tangibility. And it's like, if you know what good crap, like my mother was getting on me yesterday and we were talking about ordering things. And she was like, most of the stuff that you order is, is made with glue, you know, is glued together, furniture or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I was like, not the stuff I order because you taught me better. Tongue and groove, baby. Tongue and groove, <laughs> you know. And she was like, and I was like, hey. But she was showing that me from showing me that from a very early age. She'd be like, see, look at this. Like, look at how this dresser is made, right? And this would be at a bargain bait. We used to have this place called Building 19 up north, which would buy basically um, like fire sale stuff, mm -hmm. right? So you never knew what you were going to find there. But they maybe a, a, a furniture store went out of business, and they would buy all the inventory and bring it in. Call it Marshalls and, now. <laughs> home goods <laughs> but whatever that was our version of that before but and she, we would go through and look at things and like my stepdad was the guy who had the massive he wasn't mm -hmm. necessarily handy he flew airplanes but he could refurbish something he could sand something down put a little stain on it whatever um and i just think that that those are 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 some of the qualities that we need to get back to because i feel like there was a time when every man could fix his car. Like, I feel like there was a time when we valued, like, there's a reason why you made $20 an hour in the 80s doing construction, and there's a reason why your cousin is only making 30 40 years later. Yeah. You know, and it's like, these are still very necessary yeah, 20, jobs. I, I was entry level, and he's got 20 years. That's insane. Like, how, how does it, how does, how does it not, evolve, though? Like, shame on the, pe like, how, mm, see, that just makes me mad. And so, yeah. It's very, it's it's a very difficult but, thing. I, but that's the only thing left for the masses. You understand? I guess that's my big, that's my point, Len, yeah. is that if we're closing these retail stores, you can't make 75 grand a year managing a Bed Bath & Beyond or a Sears or a Kmart or any other, or or selling cars at a car dealership because there's no longer going to be yeah. those either. What is left for the average American who doesn't want to go to college and get themselves into student loan debt? What job is left for them to do? That's the shit that literally will wake me up in the middle of the night because I fully understand as much as I, again, love Grant and think it's dope that he has a private jet and has $5 billion you know, in his real estate portfolio. I still know that this company runs on the middle class. So if 90% of them can't survive, if 90% of the middle class is living in poverty, if 90% of the middle class needs federal assistance to pay their rent, like that's a problem. Yeah. Doesn't matter how much you tax us, we ain't going to be able to cover that bill. You are correct. I don't know what to you say to that. You are correct. It's a very it's it's a difficult equation. It's a difficult equation, but again, there's a bigger picture, and somebody needs to look at it, and somebody needs to go, okay, this caused this, caused this. This is something that's been going on in this country for 40 years, and everybody thinks this is something new. People are talking about this like it fucking happened overnight. It didn't, obviously. They're talking about it like it happened over fucking night. And you can't fix it because it didn't fucking happen mm -hmm. overnight. It happened over 40 fucking years. Well, certain things did, for sure. 
The real estate problem in South Florida did not happen over 40 years. It happened overnight. Listen, the real estate in <laughs> South Florida, you know, in the 80s, you could buy a fucking building on Ocean Drive for 400000 It's now $40 million. Yeah. So it's, but it went up like that a long time ago. It's now getting craziness, but yeah. it went from four hundred thousand. Well, no, and you, but you expect that. I mean, again, yeah. I think it's 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 the the, it's the livable the wage and things it's of that nature. I think you know, it, what how we're many talking things about. have we tried in this country with like row housing and and you know projects and whatever else in this country to subsidize the poverty level situation? Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. It makes it makes for a cesspool of of bad. Well, that's because things. there's also no other opportunity in those areas. So just putting a I bunch of houses in an area and making them affordable. What opportunities? It's it's giving it's giving corporations it's giving people a tax yeah. break to build in those areas and then to employ those people so that they can better their situation. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that's the problem. We the, put a bunch. We build the projects and then we literally ostracize the area from any sort of you know the bigger social and economic growth the bigger companies in this country i think i i'm not for sure mm -hmm. but i think amazon pays fairly well i think he's trying to get people educated i mean scale wise mm -hmm. scale wise let's, oh, let's talk oh, about like across the board yeah let's wow. talk about scale wise you know i think he's trying legitimately to get people up and he's putting things in rural areas which allows for mm -hmm. lower rents and lower housing. I mean, there's still, you know, drive an hour from here and you can get a big apartment for $1,500 a month. A big ass apartment. But where, where are you working? Uh, that's that's, that's going to pay thing. you $1,500. Like, like that's because your, your rent is what only supposed to really be one week's pay. pay. Yeah. So yeah. you're making $1,500 a week. Yeah, you're still, but you're still borderline poverty. Level. I get it. I mean, but if you're one person doing that now, both of you in the house yeah. are bringing that in. Yeah, it's a different it situation. Takes, it takes two people to work now. But literally, well, and then that goes back to to the thing that you talk about often is the family situation and that dynamic yeah. and the nucleus and why kids are at home by themselves on their phones, entertaining. You know, it, it, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of moving pieces that have gotten us to your point to this Big, place. Big yes. Big circle. And if we want to fix it, listen, if we want to fix it, we have to talk to each other. No matter who you fucking voted for, we have to talk there to each go. other because we're all on the same fucking level. OK, and if you don't want to talk to the people who are on the same level, you're going to get pushed around by the people who are above you. Period. On period. Len, next time, can we talk about your we have to get your kids in here. Good luck with that. Joey I know. Come in. Well, I want to know. I would love to. I would love to pick his brain and see what his friends want to be when they grow up. I would love to know if there's any of them that are like, yeah, I'll do construction. Yeah, I'll be a carpenter. Yeah, I'll be ele an electrician. Yes, I'll do plumbing. You know what I'm saying? Or if until they all figure like, out that they can't live on it, no, then they'll want to be. You something. can live on those things. That's the yeah. point. I mean, you like can. that's Len, my that's, cousin struggles. He works sixty hours a week. He struggles. He's got two kids. Wife, his wife has a job that barely pays for daycare, and he struggles. He works sixty hours a week, mm -hmm. and he makes twenty dollars an hour. He makes no, he makes thirty dollars an hour. Oh, thirty dollars an hour, and he struggles. But again, you're not you're not helping the point here. What we were talking about is this is the last kind of frontier where these jobs will be in existence forever. We're always going to be building shit. We're always going to need infrastructure. Yeah. We're always so these are the jobs that we need to prioritize. But we need to make sure that wages catch up across the board. Yeah, but. We need another generation of kids who prioritize those fields and don't all want to be influencers or the next, you know, Zuckerberg or Bezos. Again, nothing wrong with aspiring to that, but literally those people are one in a billion. Like how many of there's still a lot of people. I mean, I have a friend, his kids all want to, you know, one of them is a boat mechanic, just like he was. I love that, but do you any know? of your kids want to take over your business? Um, I don't know. They don't really understand what my business is. They you understand what your that. business is? Not really. <laughs> no, because that's, I mean, that's another issue. You have, you have, you know, families now that their kids were raised 
on this business that was built by grandparents or great grandparents, yeah. right? And has provided a very nice life for everybody. Some of them try and then they and get to a back. point and then don't want it. They just, they don't want it. So it was like Lorenzo's Italian market. Remember in Aventura or whatever? No, I don't remember Lorenzo's. Of course I remember okay. Lorenzo's. But that was, that was why. You go there every friggin'. But that's why they, they closed. The, the kids they closed because the property was worth forty million. No, no, but the kids didn't. But the kids didn't yes. want it anymore. Well, they were losers. You know that <laughs> that comes. This comes <laughs> listen, this comes, would you have kept it? This comes. That was your family. From probably, or would you have sold it? I probably would have kept it. This comes from you know spoiled brats. I mean, I heard a story about someone who owned a large retail chain, and he had three kids, and he spoiled the shit out of his three mm -hmm. kids, and they were complete losers. All three of them, mm -hmm. and the grandkids don't get the inheritance until they're like sixty years old, because the kids were such because the kids were such fuck ups. Yep. So you know you have that, and then you have the opposite. You have kids who go right into their family business and embrace it. Yeah. You well, know that's what the company that I worked for was family run um, newspaper, but the last the lone remaining family member started off in the mailroom and worked his way all the way up. But when the company needed to shore up the um, the pension plan, they had to fly in all the relatives, right? Because the company's been around since the 1800s. Mm -hmm. Fly them all in and trying to convince these people to put $4 billion of their dollars mm -hmm. into a pension fund for people and a business that they could give two fucks about mm -hmm. was very difficult. And that's why they had to shut down the pension. Like anybody who obviously had been hired up to that point was good, mm -hmm. but no new hires would get it because he was like, I'm the only person left with any tie to the family in this business. So I knew what the employees meant to my grandfather and my great grandfather and my father, but the rest of my relatives don't, don't care. The they sit on the board. They're like, Meh. <laughs> like fuck the peons. <laughs> like just so long as they get there, you know, their yeah. little stock check, they're good. But asking them to fork over their own money wasn't going to happen. So he's, and when he's gone, who knows, are his kids going to want to step in and be a part of the business? It'll be interesting to see, but that's a family legacy of, you know, a hundred plus years and it's now resting on one person's shoulder, even though there's plenty of people with ties to it. So that's sad because I think in other places you don't have a choice. Yeah. Like there's other cultures and other, you know, in other yeah. countries where it, now, it doesn't matter if you want to be in the family business or not. You're, you're in it. it. <laughs> you're, you're like, in it. you're in it. I mean, listen, that was with the farms here in the United mm -hmm. States. And I mean, even that's going away. Even that's hard for them to make a living. You know, it's the bigger conglomerates have taken all the profits away from, you know. I mean, the, the but we also force them to grow nothing but soy and corn. You know, it's it's to sell to China now. The pharmacy China. works on very low margins. You know, there's very there's low profit margins in everything you do that has a higher up above you. The liquor business. There's low margins in the liquor business. But it's still a good business. It, it is at what level? Because where are you at? Your distributors make money. No, no, but even in retail. Like, even in retail. Like, my family was in it, and it yeah. provided a very nice life yes. for everybody involved, employees included. It's, but the margin, based but it on, wasn't, no, no, but, but you weren't over sell. here caking and, you know, massive returns and in the no. black. That, but everybody was living, everybody yes. had insurance, everybody had, a living, like. A living is not is not that's you could still make a living now at some no no, no but i'm but i'm saying like i'm talking about homes that had equity in them i'm talking about people not having car like i'm talking about using a business the way you can use a business where people have leftover funds to invest there were 401ks everybody had you know what i'm saying like I, you get and we had but a, we had multiple so my family owned a bar from 92 or from 1990 to 2004 mm -hmm. And we all lived comfortably off of it for 10 years, from 90 to 2000. We all lived off of it. You know, Rachel and I lived and her parents lived, and we all made a living off of that one thing, which was fine. But it was a living. It wasn't, it wasn't changing our future or setting up our retirement or anything else. It was a living. Okay. I mean, but and could you have set up your retirement? Probably not. Like, but I'm saying that my family could. Like, my great grandfather did they started it. What? Yeah. Okay. I mean, but then they sold. So I mean, there was that was that there were family. Are things you living off happened. of it now? Well, no, there were oh. family things that yeah, happened. Well, that's, but but that's, what I'm saying is, but it, my grandfather did. 
Yeah, well. Surely. And he also owned land. I mean, he did other things, right? But what I'm saying, it's not everybody. Lenny, you have big dreams. You want to be the president of the United States of America. I don't really want to be, but if, if, if you know, I But what I'm saying to you is you're also an entrepreneur. For some people, that is is enough and and you could like if you don't want you new cars every year len like you there's some excessive things that you like you enjoy eating out like there's you know like there's some people that that definitely would have been good and they could have changed yeah you know you put your kids in private school that costs a yeah. grip and yeah. i understand why you did it and and that made sense but you know yeah, it's, that's a sacrifice that i wanted to make facts facts but it, it just again it goes back to that where your mind is at and and you know grandiosity is great but not everybody thinks on on that level and not and and guess what to my point to grant was the world doesn't work with every with with all no. grant cardones no. and it doesn't work <clears throat> with all chiefs homeless people you know what i'm saying like you need a vast array of of People and personalities. Yes. In order to make this thing go, especially capitalism, right? Yeah. They but have to, you have to support, you have to support your workers. That's what it boils down to. Oh. I think we should end on that note. You have to support your workers. I hope many, many, many chiefs hear that. It, it, it's true, but by the same token, the workers have to support their boss. The workers showing support, up and doing the work is supporting their boss. Yes and no. There's workers like you have at Cali Coffee, which mm -hmm. is a very successful business that's growing mm -hmm. exponentially. Mm -hmm. And you have workers that are at Starbucks. <laughs> who can't, fucking miserable to fucking eat it. Who can't so, make four shots so of espresso and some froth? This I got is, you. This is what it boils down to. But again. but I guarantee you that I mean, he has a lot of people there at that store. On 29th. There's eight or ten people yeah. working at any given time. Yeah. His payroll is huge. He's paying it because he knows those people are his bread and butter. Mm -hmm. There's what making there's they're the thing that's making everybody come there. Yeah. Okay. So you know, people Starbucks doesn't care anymore. Well, and that they don't need but to. I think that that's that's probably the most poignant part of what you're saying is that, you know, a lot of times you know, the team, well, the team emulates leadership, right? Like, and that's one of those things. So it's if you're coming in every day and you've got a great attitude and you're, you know, you're a glass half full versus a glass half empty type of leader, your team feeds off of that. And oftentimes your team will emulate that. But if you come in and you're negative or you're lazy or you're always bitching, you're glass half empty, then yeah. that's what your team will feed off of. And if you talk behind people's backs and you are constantly cutting people down, that is the vibe and the energy that you will create amongst your staff. And if more people realize that, you know, do unto others as you would have others do unto you, put out what you want to get back, put out what you would like your company to represent and reflect, then, you know, I think that we'd be in a much different yeah. space. Well, a lot of these big corporations don't care anymore because people are coming there no matter what. People are coming there no matter what. People are going to Marshalls no matter what. People are going to Kohl's no matter what. They're going there. To, they don't give two shits if the lady up front's like the most miserable. But then, then, the then guess what? Then we're to blame. Yeah. If we're willing to put up with it and we keep going back, Absolutely. then we're to blame. If if we don't shop at Toys R Us, we're to blame when Toys R Us closes down, right? Like if if yeah. if we don't complain when the person or we don't call the person at the window out for their bad attitude, like ma'am. You don't like working here. Maybe you should quit. <laughs> sure, no problem. Let me get your fries. Well, no, don't. I mean, I would drive <laughs> off. But, like, at that point, if you don't ever check anybody or if management doesn't come in That's and the, pull them I, to the side. The but caring's got to start at, This caring's got to start there, and it's got to be. I mean, look at Chick-fil-A. They're, they're all But do they compensate lucky. their people? I, you know, I would bet Chick. I, I would bet Chick Fil A and him don't pay much more than minimum. Ah, in and Out Burger pays managers one hundred and fifty grand a year. That's managers. That's managers. Yeah, but that's where it starts, though. Yes. Like with your management. Yes. So yes. if your management sees that somebody's going through something and yes. makes that person feel valued and seen, and gives you an attaboy every time you do it, or not every time, but like when you do a great job, when you mm -hmm. go above and beyond, and that gets rewarded, mm -hmm. do you reward your people on your team? Hmm, that's a good question. I don't know. I might have if to they deserve team. to be. I might. See, 
I might have to come to Tuesday meeting and just take a little. If they deserved it. I mean, listen, what? it's a te- it's a team effort. Mm-hmm. It's a team effort. If they deserve it. It it's you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. I mean, I don't think anybody here is crying. I don't think anybody here thinks I'm an asshole. Well, excuse me. I don't think anybody here thinks I'm a bad person to work for. Must be nice to. I'm definitely an asshole. I was about to say that thank goes, you. That goes besides that. Decide. It was the wrong word. To you. I was like, you're sitting. You're it sitting was the wrong word. How does somebody who thinks you're an asshole? Are you kidding me? <laughs> yes, but you know, I, I don't think anybody. I love you, but I don't think anybody's running and looking for another job right mm-hmm. now. I think they're happy where they're at. I try to make everybody. You know, you can't make everybody happy all the fucking time, but I I do make an effort, mm-hmm. which I think is important. Yeah, it is. Do you think that these people would go out and be good leaders based off of your leadership? Like, do you think if they turned around and opened their own businesses, will they be good chiefs? Hmm. You trying to put me on the spot here? Do I, they watch our podcast? <laughs> <laughs> or they're sitting in the room while we're making it? Uh, no, yeah. I mean, I definitely, I want them, you know, my team's a core team. So if my core team can't be chiefs at some point, then my company's not growing. Got you. Right? I like that. Yeah. Because, you know, the core team is is the people that are going to have mm-hmm. to have people under them. I don't think we're going to figure all of this out today. I feel like I have a lot to process. I think you do, too. I do. No, no, no. Because I just think there's so many, I don't know, Len. I'm tired of being woken up in the middle of the night by shit going on in America. Like, I didn't think I was going to get in my 40s. You're woke up in the middle of the night by your alarm clock. You got to be at work at fucking. That too. I'm also also (laughs) woken up by the fear of not hearing my alarm. Very, very true. I can't blame all my sleepless nights on the state of America. Um, Those are just occupational hazards. Uh, But yeah, I definitely think that we have a lot to address. We have to talk to each other. We have to, I think, get back to our core values. We have to, I think, remember what this country was really built on and get back to valuing that as opposed to the materialism and the excess and, you know, the hopes and prayers and, I don't know, the pipe dreams that folks love to kind of barrage us with right now like this could be you you know Mm -hmm. um sitting on an island in bali at 25 and it's like yeah that'll happen for a few people and great for them yeah go there on vacation hopefully they'll give you a job job. all right well listen um i know we have some incredible guests coming up on the man tfa podcast very excited uh for upcoming episodes if you've missed uh, anything from season two, please go back and check it out. We did have Grant Cardone on with us. Uh, that was an incredible conversation. We had our girl Brittany Brave back on with us in episode 31 talking about all kinds of things. Tequila was involved. Yes. Um, the conversation was very real, but she always brings a little bit of, you know, levity to it. Mm-hmm. Um who else? Misty Eyes was on. We were talking about, you know, the LGBTQIA plus community. Kendra um, was back. Kendra was back answering questions that folks had uh, in the comments, which, again, is something that we're doing all season long. So uh, if you hear anything that is either triggering or leads you to ponder your own existence <laughs> or whatever, drop a comment. Uh, we definitely read them. We definitely respond. And then we've been going back and kind of having subsequent episodes based just off of your comments and commentary. So like, share, subscribe, follow. Um, we appreciate you guys. Like I said, drop some comments. You can email me. Can we be at mantfup.com, right? TV. TV. Mantfuptv.com. You haven't said it in weeks. If you have any thoughts or concerns <laughs> or you just want to flirt with her, please email her Nobody at Kimmy B at mantfuptv.com. Like, please too much. Uh, make sure you follow us on all of our social media, please. TikTok and Instagram are really where it's popping the most, but and YouTube, too. All right. We're out. Peace.